Yes, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting episode of Tales of Heroes, episode number 38. And we have a great one here for you today. We are almost live from somewhere in northern France, about to cover the unfolding battle of Angville. And with me, as always, my uh, shimmering co-host, Vittensby. Welcome to the program. I hear you have some news for us this week. Yep, it's always great to be here, and we're, I know we're looking forward to episode 38, but uh, yeah, it, we're still on 37. Well, so. that's what I said was 38, don't you know? In, in <laughs> I was speaking in code. Real listeners will know that I, you must add one when I say numbers, otherwise <laughs> I'm lost the argument. Okay. That's for sure. On but yeah, news. yeah, I started uh, my own little blog, uh, it's just about... Everything related to video games. Today, I was talking about eFriends, just the whole subject of that, and like uh, text based interaction versus uh, voice over IP interaction, uh, you know, podcasting, blogging, stuff like that, and uh, forum stuff. So, uh, if you guys wanted to go check that out, it's, uh, you know, http colon backslash backslash Vitten's blog. Yeah, and that's VIT. This, this, this is the 2000s. We don't use that HTTP crap. Well, then how do you how do you propose getting? You just say okay, scratch out the www. Yeah, you don't have to type that. All right, scratch the www and just type Vitten's blog V I T E N S blog dot wordpress dot com. Actually, it that's wouldn't work address. if you type in the www. Exactly. It's a subdomain. So. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So. so if you guys are interested in hearing what I got to say about, you know, video gaming in general, the whole all-encompassing aspect of it, uh, yeah, check out my blog. Thanks. Which, which you, we'll put a link on the site in the same uh, – in the notes for this show for this uh, video as well. So if you want to go back and check that out. All right. So let's get right into it. Today we have Kodachrome versus Crusher of All. And uh, Kodachrome is going to be playing on the Allied side in the north of Angaville. Crusher for All on the south as the Axis. We are at the five-second mark. Let's unpause it in five, four, three, two, one. One, unpause, and let's get it on here. Barracks opening first from uh, Kodachrome. Good luck's being exchanged by the players. Good show of sportsmanship there. This is actually one of four, I think this is the first one that they played. At least that's what it's labeled as, the first one that these guys played for us. Uh, and they wound up playing four of them. Two of them were pretty good. We picked uh, this one because uh, we did some uh, last week, so we wanted to do a different one this week. So we'll see how this one plays out. And uh, again, major, major distinctions of Angaville, a left side that's very barren of, you know, urban areas, just very open, good for tanks, good for AT guns, uh, semi-okay for AT guns. The right area is hard for uh, long-range stuff like tanks. AT guns have... Sometimes a good chance to get in some areas of... I don't know what I'm talking about, Vinsby. <laughs> I have to start off by saying if I was going to use any other gaming tag besides the name that I use, it, it must be, you know, Crusher of All. <laughs> That's I, true. <laughs> I just like the sound of it. But we have kind of an un untraditional start uh, from Crusher of All. He's just, you know, did the one Pioneer opening with the double Volks, which is, I think, more and more becoming kind of a standard opening on uh, Angaville. Uh, when I do my NGOP, the first thing I always do is send my engineers to the fuel point on the right, and I've noticed if you do that, um, just go straight out there, there's really nothing that Axis can do to prevent the cap. You'll get the cap. They might send their first Volk squad there and their first Pioneer and force you off of it, so you just retreat back. But if you send your first NGs there and you start out in the north as allies, you'll always get that cap. Um, I've noticed. Um, as long as you position your guys in that little shrub, so that's just a little tip. Uh, we kind of have a little bit of crazy microing going on by wow. Code Chrome. I don't know if that's a barbed wire exploit or what the hell that is. I don't know. I'm, I'd be curious to see. It. No, his guys still could get through it, but that looks like it might very well be some kind of an exploit in, in similar to the tank traps, but I guess that wouldn't be because they could probably destroy it in like two seconds. I think you can just walk through it. Um, unfinished barbed wire, that was a problem before where you used to be able to do basically what, what Coda just did. And uh, 
that was a problem before, but they kind of kind of changed that when they fixed the five percent. Well, the five percent OP bugs still there, but when they fixed the OP, you know, um, not being complete. You know what I'm talking about, Bridger? That whole thing we had a long time ago, which we ran it about. Oh yeah, absolutely, no question. So. So it seems like, as usual, allies are in slightly better position right now on, on Angaville, and Axis is kind of struggling just for their side, and is forced to transition over to the strat point on the left. Um, it's always good, I think, nowadays to cap the VPs. Um, even if it's just one, it puts the pressure on your opponent, and the clock's ticking in, you know, against him. So I always think early VP, at least one VP cap pretty early on worked into your build order isn't, isn't so bad. But to wait, like, in some games we've had on the show, 10 or 15 minutes, uh, I think that's too long to cap a VP. Oh, absolutely. Right now, the allied player, see, the northern player seems to always have an advantage in some cases because when they decap that point, if they want to, they can jump in the building and just deny it from the enemy for a good long time. The southern player doesn't exactly have the same ability to do it to the other side. He can jump behind a sandbag, but it doesn't provide the same protection. No, sorry, not a sandbag, haystack. But it doesn't provide quite the same protection. On the other on the other side, if you want to prevent your opponent from taking that, putting them in a building, uh, putting your guys in a building to defend it is just about as effective as when they try to defend you from taking it. So it sort of evens out, I think. Yeah, I know uh, we have standard starting positions here, and my whole strategy back in the fall when I was playing under expert computer for allies was just basically to charge that building and get an early rifle squad in there and keep on decapping it. And Because there's really nothing Axis can do if you have a rifle squad in there. And I think that's why a lot of Axis players started going left side of Angaville, just because allies seem to always be able to sneak something in there, an early engineer, and then back it up with a rifle squad, and then you got to get a sniper to counter it. So... I think although, you know, early on the initial impression was right side obviously favors Axis because there's buildings, you can throw your MGs in there. Um, you have a big problem if allies get a rifle squad in any of those buildings. So um, it's just interesting how things have changed. Uh, do you think that the the that this new opening that people have been doing lately with just the one Pioneer and the quick two Volks has uh, been pretty successful in this game? Um, well, so far, it's given the the Axis player a lot of capping power. He's got three Volk squads and a Pioneer squad now, and two machine guns already. The Axis player only has what looks to be about three rifle squads. So it looks like, uh, so far, the, the Axis player has more capping power on the field at the moment. But the Allied player, surprisingly, has been the one with all the victory points. As you can see, we're almost down 100 victory points already with, uh, you know, he's trying to take it back now, but he's still going to lose some of his guys in the process here, and it's still going to be ticking down on him. So the sides yep. tend to, I think, nearly every game that we've played, or that we've watched here on Angaville, it's like they both lock down one side or the other, and then they almost switch, but then they manage to take back their side, or vice versa. Or sometimes they switch completely, and that's almost what happened here. Both sides had oh, man. That one was a lot. bad MG deployment. <laughs> Seen to get easily flanked right there. Uh, oh, early, yeah. early weapon support center. Uh, I don't know if that transitional switch was a little bit pre preemptive or whatnot, but uh, that's just a losing battle right there. He really needs to retreat. Yeah, interestingly, squad. That, that's why we saw so few rifle squads on the field, because he switched right to weapon support. Yeah. Oh, I think he lost that infantry squad, too. I've always felt that if you're going to go weapon support, I mean, I know a lot of people nowadays have been, you know, getting it from mortars and MGs, because, you know, Blitz, Comcraft Center, that was one of the most effective ways to, to shut that down kind of early on, and mortars is is a pretty good unit, uh, especially now that people are using medic bunkers a lot. But I always felt that it's kind of like one or the other, um, for the most part. It's really hard to switch, and it seems like if you couldn't do it with rifles, the weapon support center just probably won't be able to turn the tide. Now, obviously, that's not a rule of thumb, but I think more times than not, switching to weapon support center, going that squad down, wasting all that building time to get the to get the weapon support center up, and then get your first squad out. It's the, the time it takes to do that, I think, in a lot of cases, especially on a fast-paced map like Angaville, just it's it's too long. So you really it, have to time it right. It is pretty. It is a long time. And somebody was pointing out in one of the comments on our on our on our 
thread on the website about how long it takes the Axis to tech up versus the Allies, because you have the, the time, the actual tech time. Uh-oh, we got mortar action coming in now, trying to take out uh, that machine gun position. But the time it takes for the Axis to get to the next level and start producing things is the time it takes to build the building and the time it takes to, uh, to actually put the tech up there, actually tech from one level to the next. So you've got almost double the time, whereas the Allies, in general, just have to build a building to get to the next level of tech. It's just that their buildings are more expensive. So, I mean, you have the supply depot that goes up really quick, but that's about it. Otherwise, the Axis take a lot longer, in general, to tech up compared to the Allies. And now you see the Allies using the Axis uh, Volk's ability to build sandbags against them at this point. So it turned out the mortar really helped him retake that position there. Otherwise, it would have been uh, a lot more difficult. Or maybe if he had more rifle squads, instead he could have just flanked with it. What do you think? Yeah, I think a lot of people still to this day prefer to go either fast bars or fast nades rather than get fast weapon support center. Interestingly, I mean, we have a supply yard out, and then he then Coda built a uh, triage center. Um, I'm not sure if you... I don't know, with this kind of building-ish spam type going on, uh, he might... I don't know, he might be going armor yeah. to try to get a really, really quick Pershing out. Um, I really am not sure. I mean, this is a very interesting play style these got going on. Quite experimental, I would say. Um, weapon support center as a majority of your units on the field right now, and then you get a triage center. It's kind of a uh, kind of weird play style, but uh, we'll see how it pays off. I mean, one thing to note is, is on a map like this, I know that uh, some players I've been talking to recently they go fast bars, even on some loss sometimes. Because uh, if you if you get suppressed by an MG and you're close enough when you get suppressed, you can just focus fire on the MG and sometimes it'll kill it, especially when you have you know a hard a lot of riflemen in the area. So that's kind of uh, I've been seeing fast bars a lot in the replays that I've been watching as opposed to fast nades. I think everyone's pretty good you know pretty good nade, nade dodger at this point. So. Uh, just these interesting wow. shifts, the players get better. That one squad of Volks just like routed in the entire Allied army. Did you see that? Yep. MP40s for the win. Yeah. Sometime. That was ridiculous. Actually, there were two squads. I take that back. There was another squad that had to retreat because the machine gun was shooting at it, but that squad just tore it up. Give them the Medal of Honor right there. Jeez. <laughs> Took everything. Do we have any uh, company or <clears throat> choices? Um, yet? I don't know. Somebody tells me you can see it in the uh, in, in the pane where the where the thing's supposed to be, but all I see is a star. So I don't know what the heck that's supposed to mean. Yeah, we had a oh my god, mine just two mines just went off in the upper right hand corner and just completely owned that Volk squad. Oh wow, it's completely gone, huh? Yeah, it was a good good turn of events. Uh, going, I mean, a squad down is exactly what Coda needs because he's. He spent at least, gone a squad down at least, you know, to build that triage center. The thing about the supply yard is when you build it, you get a 25% uh, income uh, boost. You know, upkeep, decreased upkeep, I should yeah. say. So, uh, oh, there we go. That's the that's the retreat crawl bug right there. You see it yeah. on the engineers? I see it. There you go. Get it fixed. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Did he loot? No, he, there he they pulled go. it out. Yeah. Oh, they finally got up. That's definitely weird. I wonder, it's like, it must be when they get, get suppressed, suppressed right the instant they the hit retreat. the retreat, right? Because normally retreat breaks suppression in the process, but... So, yep. very back and forth game here, but it looks like the Allies are about to take both fuels at this point. What kind of fuel situation are the Allies sitting at? Uh, you're, you mean the Axis? You mean I'm sorry, the Axis. Yeah, uh, well, he just rolled out with his first Puma, which is in the right-hand side of the map, just going to intercept his rifleman. He's pretty low on fuel. Um, he actually has one fuel with 26 income, but he's working on his second Puma um, to come out. I don't know. Um, it switched to airborne at this point. As much as I hate to say it, just a squad of recoilless might be a good investment or... You know, get another MG and try to set up an MG trap and activate AP rounds and get sticky bombs just to finish it off. Either one of those would be uh, interesting. And he just lost the Pioneer Squad in the far left, so definitely Crusher Vol is 
probably hurting a little bit right now, but it doesn't seem like Code is doing much better. So, uh, who do you think's uh, winning this game right now, Bridger? We're at 409 to 409, so it's completely, completely wow. even. That is really even. Um, I now see uh, a tank symbol, which means I think our our allied player has gone armor at this point. He doesn't have anything yet, so he might have gone raid first, or uh, or he's got fast deployment. Which is why I can't see anything, but we'll see which... I can't tell you which track he went down yet. This is actually not bad situation for a Puma to be in. I mean, I'm sure he must be furiously upgrading Sticky Bombs. Maybe not. He doesn't have Sticky yeah, Bombs. Yeah, uh, but... AP rounds right there. Damage Engine will get it, and it just got the Puma. Uh -oh. AP round. Wow. Yeah. I did not <laughs> expect that. Nice yeah. job. I mean, I guess that's why he wasn't upgrading. He knew where it was going. I mean, uh, you don't often see the AP rounds get to be used like that because you don't often see the machine guns out there, and you don't often see a Puma run right into a machine gun like that, but that was very good prediction by the allied player uh, Kodachrome here. Yeah, most definitely. Um, one thing to note is, is if you have a Puma in your base and you don't want to sit him in your HQ or whatnot, you can put him in the MG emplacements, um, especially if you're sitting standing around your barracks. Another thing to note is, I mean, he built his triage center there, and you know it's great when you retreat. But um, ah, one thing to note is, is if you keep it, you know, near your barracks, you should always. I guess what I'm trying to say is, is when you retreat and you go back to your HQ, you should always be moving forward to your barracks. You should never keep your guys at your HQ. It's just a waste of time. The time that they're spent standing there, they could be reinforcing at your barracks and cut the time to get back on the field while they're reinforcing. So. That's a little trick. I yeah. think a lot of people know that, but I'm sure not everyone does that. Um, I see that a lot. So take that into consideration and maybe not build your triage center right at your HQ's uh, doorstep. It takes a little bit more micro, but at the same time, it, it, cuts the it cuts the deployment time to get back on the field. Yeah, it looks like he, he, didn't, he wasn't so lucky with the machine gun this time. Is he getting the bug there? Is he trying to move it away? Yeah, I think he, there he goes. He's retreating now. Um, I mean, once, once you get fooled by that once, I mean, your Puma's not going to run right into a machine gun again. It's usually going to be able to get out and get around and flank it very easily like it just did. As soon as you realize where the machine gun is, it's very easy to flank it with a Puma. Nice job prediction with the MG42. On this map, it's all about putting the machine gun where your opponent's going to run to force them to retreat or just take horrific losses because every time your opponent has to retreat they're giving up map control and allowing you to capture more territory while they run back onto the field another puma running into the base is it going to be able to finish off that last guy of the squad he made it all the way back wow and now i like he's to run a test healed. now that i'm looking at this puma versus rifleman being healed by triage center Pumas, as we know, really don't do all that much damage these days, especially compared to what they used to. I wonder if the triage center actually heals faster. And if it does, it's definitely a problem. Not a huge problem. One thing to note is, is that the whole map is pretty much cut off from both players right now, um, except Dakota Chrome has his uh, fuel and munitions coming in. So if you look, it's pretty, yeah. pretty polarized. Uh, and no one's really getting any benefit. Yeah, the allies, uh, the Kodachrome has been able to keep knocking down this strat point over here, which cutting off his opponent. The dual Pumas, though, are ripping him, forcing him to pay a lot of extra resources to reinforce all those rifle squads that he might not otherwise be able to. And now we've got more mortars trying to take and force their way back into this strat point. It looks like they finally are. Getting back onto that strap point. Yeah, I'd just be concerned with all this Puma spam that he's going squad after squad down. And although Coda built the tank depot, um, still uh, he's really lacking in, in capping power. So I think he, I mean, he's picked the right doctrine. I mean, Blitz, so he can get stormtroopers with Shreks, as opposed to relying wholly on Stugs for uh, for anti tank. But uh, I think he should definitely get at least one more squad of storms at this point. Um, he, re he really needs a capping power. Um, he's got a couple of Volk squads and storms, but uh, compared to compared to Dakota, I mean, what does he have? He's got like two Flamer Engineers on the right, a rifle squad. He's got like probably two rifle squads at his base, another rifle squad. I mean, we got mortar. We got so he's got a lot more infantry. I think one of the issues with tier three is people are like, okay, I got Pumas. Now that's all I'm gonna spam, and that's not all. You gotta build infantry no matter how 
good Puma spam looks, because really it's just not what uh -oh, we used to Uh-oh, uh-oh, just gets out of there. Just barely gets out of there. We had a rifle squad drop some sticky bombs on it. But it managed to get out without a damaged engine, I think. Oop. There we go. Pretty yep. sure we got no damaged engine. So that that was pretty lucky right there. Yeah, where do you have uh, the pioneers in the <clears throat> in Crusher's base are is repairing uh, two pioneer squads are now repairing as armored cars. Always like to see repair, especially because these Pumas were severely damaged, and to keep them alive, you know, in any game is pretty crucial. The enemy is down to 300. Don't know what neither player seems to be able to get a hold of this fuel. They just keep going back yeah. and forth, especially this left fuel. <laughs> Definitely. So, uh, do you think the weapon support center paid off for him? I mean, I think it definitely did. I was a little concerned, but I definitely think that it paid off for him. Yeah, especially killing that first Puma. That was very important. I mean, yeah, you say that Pumas don't do that much damage, which is true, but they still have the ability to kite riflemen if you micro them well. So I don't. I think that's pretty well compensated for, even if you know they're still very potent when used in the right hands. Yeah, they used to, I mean, when they, it never made sense to me when they cost 25 fuel and M8s cost 30. I mean, yeah, okay, M8s can beat Pumas, and then you just get the up gun. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Did hmm? I just hear what I thought I heard? Oh, Calliope, not Goliath. That was weird. <laughs> Calliopes are now available. We have uh, Allied War Machine and Calliopes. Oh, so you went right side. That's interesting. Yeah. It's really interesting. I thought I heard Goliath available for deployment. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. What the hell? All right. Uh, and thank you, thank you, Coda. I, I, my heart just dropped. You built a medic station. My heart just exploded. Oh wow! Awesome. I thought I. I yes, I did run over that. Where that's the hell definitely you a, a Tales of Heroes first, if not a Company of Heroes first, right there. So. Yeah. We'll see how this works out. I'm really curious to see if it actually does anything. Where did he put it? <laughs> I just ran over. Right behind the northern house in Ingaville. There, I did see it. Okay. Meanwhile, that M10 is cleaning up. Uh oh, meets a stug. Time to back off. Time to back off. Clyby Barrage incoming. Uh oh. Uh oh. Is he gonna get anything? Got, it's a very, got very long range. Wow, he did get the MG with a lucky shot, though. I think it was pretty dead already, but that was pretty yeah. effective right there. Even though it's such Third long edge. range. It'll allow his M10 mm -hmm. point two ish, whatever you want to call it, more maneuverability, I guess. I don't know. That that Clive barrage was as bad as about as bad as mine are. <laughs> well, I mean, they're know. free, so you want to use them as often as possible, oh, sure. even when you don't have the most opportune moment available. And here we have a couple. Of, we have a couple of riflemen about to uncover Storm these storms. I always I always have that happen. My storms are moving up. I'm like, oh crap! Oh crap! Oh crap! Stop running in that direction! No, I don't want to be unveiled. It's too late. It's too late. There they are. Oh, even as he just kills them. But they are already unveiled. But that was a quick kill by that Puma. Wow. Yep. Oh, uh, it was only two men in the, yeah. in the squad. I'm surprised he chose Calliope. I mean, it's so... It's such an uncommon choice, especially against Tier 3. I'm, I'm just very, very surprised with that. If I, I, I could say that that could possibly cost him the game. But... Uh, We'll see. Uh, I mean, yeah, you Pershing know the game's really balanced when not choosing a Pershing dooms you to lose. <laughs> well, if you go armor, but yeah, I know what you're saying. Well, Calliope would be great against Tier 2, but to okay. do it against Tier 3, like... Well, it's certainly it, very good against Storm Spam. If you can pull out these storms and find out where they are and drop a Calliope Barrage on them, that could be very costly to reinforce it and even if he loses those panzer shreks that'd be very nice too unleashes it oh wow one volley from four panzer shreks absolutely destroys the medic bunker before it can do anything yep. the medic Another station, Calibre, right. Raj, coming. yep here we go oh uh, no he didn't get it not far enough there's lots of pretty explosions for you bridger i do like explosions though so do I. Oh, that <laughs> and since I'm on my work nice. computer right now recording the show for you guys, I can actually see decent graphics, which is amazing. Oh no, oh no, he should not have run that M10 in there. I don't care how many flamers you got. But he did get out of time, uh, out in time, I think. I think. Keep backing up, uh oh. Another Calliope Barrage, dear God. That wasn't 125 seconds. Does he have two of those things? He does, he has two of them. And that and Bridger, can we do it just one more, just one more time for old times' sake? <laughs> it missed. I'm not gonna tell you that it's overpowered. Damn it. <laughs> we'll wait till it obliterates two whole squads. 
Yeah. So now yeah, what he needs is... to do though is, is get two of them together and just have like overlapping fire. So it's like I don't care where you run, you're getting killed by some one of these two. Losing I that think M10 that was have been a too bad Shermans. problem. I mean, I don't know. That would have been. Uh, what do the Shermans short? have to kill? They would have had just as much of a problem fighting the storms. And there's not like there's a deluge of studs on the field right now. Yeah, well, this is cool. I mean, we never really had someone go right side of armor. I mean, it's pretty, you know, use all these Calliope barrages, which is just completely torching everything in its path, so. Oh, yeah. Thank God they're free, huh? <laughs> For the most part, except yeah. the price of a tank. It's good to pull them out early, too. That just means you get more barrages. Calliope barrage probably go really well with uh, Sniper, too. If he had a Sniper that he could just find out where everything is. Maybe not necessarily yeah. the storms, but he could do a lot of damage to the Stug and the Puma. Maybe not necessarily kill him, but just force him to hit their... Uh-oh! Uh-oh! Took out two of them. Wow! Down to two guys with almost no health. That was fairly effective. Oh, they're gonna go with the other two-man squad to do it. He has two Calliopes, dude! Come on, wait for it, wait for it. He's gonna drop another one. Come on. <laughs> Come on! The cooldown, there it is. There, there it is! is. Cool down. There it is. Is he going to get out of there in time? The mortars are going. Stormtroopers in trouble. All alone amongst the fire. Can he get out in time? They're retreating the wrong direction. Oh, it didn't do anything. <laughs> and that is why the Calliope is underpowered. Actually, he was just too far away. I think you called it right right there. Without its turret, I mean, it was pretty clearly overpowered before. But without its turret, it really has... I don't care if it has a free barrage. I mean, yeah, okay, it's great, but... I mean, you just paid 560 manpower for something that's point. just a, a, a barrage weapon, and it's like every two minutes, so... It's it's really a, a huge gamble, and especially because it's a end, end of... End of... End, ugh, end of the tree power for right side armor. It's kind of like... I don't know, it's, it's really situational, and that's why I think everyone just goes for the Pershing, but... Uh, I think it was weird getting two. I think one would have been really nice to back him up, but having two is very interesting. So far, is he hasn't been able to take advantage of it. God, it's a croc. <laughs> is it? It is a croc. Well then, that might just... change up the right side of the map, unless, oh wait, there's a stug waiting for him still. Yeah, that's, man, I wish that would have been a Sherman. I think, I mean, his play style is really crazy. I mean, we have one of every single kind of building at this point, except the motor pool, thank God. I'm so sick of motor pools. But, uh, no, that's interesting. Is I think he he's base just going, rushing with that croc? He's gonna be. Well, I think he feels that, uh, there's gonna be some storms there. Anyways, I know that everyone right. kind of learned this, but back in 1.4 uh, and 5, when croc was still completely overpowered, uh, the best thing to do when you see that come in, and we got like, oh, he's scouting for his Calliope. Dear God. Ah. He's doing anyways, a lot the thing of to do is uh, spread to cloak over a lot of stuff. Sorry, go ahead. It's oh! What the hell? Ally War Machine while it's in out of control! Okay. Look at that! No way in hell that he's gonna get that. I cannot believe that shit. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Nice was already dead and he popped it. Yeah. <laughs> Another Calliope barrage. I can't believe I can't believe he killed it in like one barrage from those storms. I mean, granted there was a stug behind it, but still that was pretty quick. You know what tickles me a lot, Bridger? The the the, the tank that just died just came back in and it still has allied war machine on it. Thanks yeah. for the free and invul invulnerability shield. Pretty much. Germans are territory. That's crazy. Imagine but. using that in your base. I mean, it's like you could probably get the Allied War Machine to pop twice if he's got a lot of stuff in there shooting at it. Yeah, this replay is, I mean, I can say that it's been one of my favorites so far. Just the uh, oddball strategy from, from Coda against yeah, such a... very different. Against an oddball opening from uh, from Crusher of All. And now, I mean, I just can't believe that all of the like, right side armor and triage center, early weapon support center, you know, quick supply supply yard. This is actually working. Um, with no real tanks, I mean, we have one, M one M10, now we got another M10, but uh, it's a good combination. I think a lot of players should take note of this uh -oh. uh, risky play style. Oh, there's a Sherman, though, too. Oh, no, that's still the crocodile. I couldn't see both guns. It's gonna get opened up on boom, 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 boom. In trouble. 
Not quite. They managed to uh, not get engine damage and be out of there. Uh oh. Uh oh. Um. Yeah, it's not very uh oh. I'm gonna stop saying that because it's, it's never actually resulted in anything. It's never ending. <laughs> it's a never. You're gonna have to say it every 30, 30, 40 seconds. Yeah, you know? but it's still. I mean, I just keep expecting because he's too far away when he pops the barrage. Is the problem. Because you can get, that barrage can kill a squad easily if it's caught within there, even if it's trying to retreat. But you have to be at, like, minimum distance. Yep. The one thing, let's see if the pioneers get run over. He might Does be pressure trying. pressure of all have Bridger's Curse? <laughs> ah, he got yeah, one! one. That's for the XP, woo! Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, we got two. <laughs> now he's gonna like park it behind the HQ. Maybe he won't notice, and I'll be able to destroy it. There's uh, another Calliope barrage going off. <laughs> God. And you know what's really bad is now that uh, he just got the ability to call in a tiger, but the he has no absolutely zero map control, so he's pretty screwed. Oh, and another pioneer just got run over. He's chasing he's these pioneers. Uh oh. Going after the last <laughs> There's one. the Shreks. We got three Shreks uh, now. Or three Storm uh, Shreks. Uh-oh. Yeah. We got main yeah, gun destroyed. Let's see if it 5 percented. Let's see how many 5 percent bugs one, do two, we get. Oh, there was three. How many? Come on. He hit his own Comcraft Center. Three 5 percent. Buggo, take notes. You don't have to post on the forums anymore. With uh, four, about the 5 percent bug. Five, and there was five and then a kill. I think. 5 percent for the win. Yeah, we're just yeah, lucky he didn't get so, away with uh, that. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and he's off down the road. What the hell? <laughs> now we have uh, MG emplacement, which I found to be quite useful actually these days. I started using him on Bo Lowlands way back when they implemented that map. Uh, it's a very good oh, yeah. map for bunk and MG emplacements. I use it every once in a while on Angaville, um, <laughs> just for the hell of it. But um, yeah, it's it's this is uh, it's a good choice because. If he walks, you know, into that, I mean, he's going to have to retreat, and it's only real weakness, right? Another Clyde Barrage going off. <laughs> he keeps missing with them, though. He's he's attacking where they are and not where they're going to be. And he's keeping. Yeah, no, he, I think he's playing too conservative with them. He's he's kept them far back in his base until he needs them, and then you know, by the time he drives them up to attack, the enemy's moved, and he's not, and they're not sitting stale anymore. And I mean, he needs to be like right behind his own forces with them. Yep, I agree. The trick about the Calliope barrages is you place it, it's counterintuitive, right? You'd think like, oh, and he just lost his crocodile. You'd think, okay, the Calliope barrage, oh my sweet god. Well, the Allied War Machine that time wasn't activated uh, in time, but... Where did he lose um, the croc, on the left? Uh, yeah, on the left by the Stug, but uh, it's, it's counterintuitive the way it works, because you would think that, okay, this is my circle, this is its AoE, this is where it's going to land. But no, it always goes past the circle. Yeah. So you always have to kind of undershot it a bit, which is really frustrating. Now we have a tiger on the field, and he's going to have to get, he's going to have to do something because he's, uh, these Calliope's are really become a liability at this point. I don't right, know he hasn't want. been able to have them pay back. Now he's charging them into the enemy's base with Allied War Machine on, but it's going to wear off any minute now. God. These Panzer Shreks are just, uh, that's really weird. <laughs> nice. I'm so happy that we posted that, that, that we used this game. It's hilarious. <laughs> right. And now there he's like, go. oh wait, the Allied War Machine ran out. I'm going to hide now. <laughs> uh, that was a fun little uh, mid-game comment. Yeah. But uh, really, these Panzer Shreks are absolutely owning his own base. <laughs> so, really? Yeah, it's like... It hit his barracks, brought that down, hit his Comcraft Center early, but, you know, there's nothing you can really do about it. There was a... I mean, he could be I've, taking out this whole base if every one of these barrages... Uh oh we got another one. I don't know where he's going with it. Is he going all the way across the map at the Tiger? He is! Yeah. That's so ineffective! Look well, at how widely spaced those dog. are. Chipping damage for the win. I mean, yeah, <laughs> you can do some damage, but you can't use it now when it's that cool. far away. Barrage. It's not tight enough. And so it doesn't do enough damage to even matter. Uh-oh, uh-oh. He might have got lucky, though. Nope, not quite. I mean... Storm Squad's lining up for the kill on the right. Yeah, I see him. Here they go. Oh, that's the life he's gone. Well, this is why he's being conservative. I mean, cloaks... How many 5% bugs will we get this time? I don't know. 
Uh, please fix. Main uh, gun destroyed. Wait a minute, the main gun doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, Tiger's on the left. Let's see if he has stickies. He does have stickies. Main gun and destroyed. another potential 5% bug. And nope, stick. got it. Another I sticky. I just can't believe that this Calliope's lived through yeah. after all that carnage. But, uh, I don't know. These medics don't seem to be really doing anything uh, on the right side. Maybe I missed something, but... No, he doesn't have anything there on the le on the right. Yeah. I don't think he's lost anything uh, on the right yet. He's about to lose this Sherman, though. I think that was a little bit careless of him to just charge the Tiger with the Sherman and an M10. But Especially I guess he was trying to do everything he could to defend that fuel. And here come the MP40s on the right, just cleaning up the rifles. Level 2 veterancy on his infantry, level 2 veterancy on his tanks. Yeah, man. I guess he spent his resources on that when he had no map control, which is a great investment. Could, could potentially turn this game around. I mean, at this point, this is kind of the crucial moment in the in the, in the game. Um, I can see by the counter, there's only probably about 10 minutes left. So I don't know. We gotta have some better Calliope barrages. And, yeah. Uh, there's a map. You know what? I can't even see the medic on the mini map. As no, I can't the, either. As opposed to the Axis one, which you can see on the mini map. Mm. Yeah, they're little white squares. Oh, he killed the squad. With see, that's what happens when you use the Calliope when it's very close. That's see the why. See the that flew all the way up on the roof of the building right above it? He's yeah. like laying between the <laughs> physics for the win. Woo. But I mean, that's what happens when you use the Calliope at minimum range. It obliterates everything that's inside that minimum range. So I mean, every time he did it at like half the map's width, he was wasting a Calliope barrage that could have been used for something a lot better. Uh-oh. You see this? We got sneaky stormtrooper squads. I think that's four yeah. of them there, or maybe three. Three of them moving into Squad. the Allied base. He's gonna start. Well, they got quite a few buildings to kill before they uh, actually take it down. So this could work out for him, or it could be absolutely disastrous. Yeah. And uh, you know, my guess is is double double Calliope barrage. And Coda, what the hell is up with all this barbed wire fencing bullshit? I mean, look at this on the far right. <laughs> it's just making me laugh. I'll give the guy style points. On that. <laughs> style points. He's going to go for the HQ, maybe? Or was he going to go for the supply depot? Uh-oh, here we go. I'll kill the HQ. HQ, yep. Wow. And it no more allied war machine for you. One quarter down in the first volley. And here He's comes the tiger and stud. Right now. I think this is pretty much the end. Yeah, if he gets close and does a double Calliope barrage when he's within minimum range, he'll be able to kill all of those storms, and that'll give him a huge advantage to turn this around. Yep. But he's not gonna wait, I don't think. He's not gonna wait. That's unfortunate. Well, he's kinda saved his own HQ. Well, this is definitely the first time I've ever seen someone have to Calliope barrage their own base to save their hide. The other one should be moving closer, not just doing it. Err. He's gonna do it anyway, but here we go. Let's see if it does it. Effective. He got a lot of them, actually. So it wasn't completely ineffective. Did the other did squad already retreat? Yeah, it did. So he, he got uh, all of his squads out of there, though. If they had been closer, he never would have had been able to, to react fast enough. He would have killed all of those squads with a double barrage. Here's a good example of how bad those machine guns blow on those uh, on the Calliope. It's a little gunner. You can see the that Pioneer squad was at full health. Oh, it's yeah. It's done, like pitiful damage. Oh man, and now he's mining. <laughs> that's awesome. He's mining the off-map road. I never thought of that, but that's a great idea. A level, a level full health, level 3 tiger. Panzer and Shrek obtained. Like, I see the level 3, yeah, you don't see that very often. If he, if he keeps that alive, if he keeps it alive, that, I mean, it, it could very well kill one of those two. But, uh, He's like praying. He's Don't like, run over the mine. What are you doing? I think he's trying to run over the these guys. Sherman, yeah, good luck. What else was he going to do, right? Does yeah. he have a uh, Pershing available? I think he's trying to get the last minute Pershing. That's why he blew the mine. Does he have a Pershing uh, available? I can't tell. right now because his HQ isn't up so I don't see any of his stuff. I didn't oh, remember right. seeing it before. He's still trying to kill the Pioneer over here with those little... Uh-oh. Here comes the barrage. 
Move the other stuff out of the way. Could be the end of the Stug. But again, he's not really close enough, so it's not concentrated. Stug's almost gone. He's got two Panzer Shreks now, and one of a, on each of his squads. We got a little bit of a VP game. Here comes the, the, the coup de grace on that Stug, I think. If he can nope. manage to get one to land. No, uh, it was a total, total miss. That's why you... Yeah, you got to do it closer. Come on. Well, he's got... All right, now he needs to call in. Now he does have a Pershing, yes. He's How got. Much, he's man? at 487, though. How much? 487? 487. He ran over the mine, I guess. Maybe on purpose to make room for the Pershing that would be un, yep. undamaged. He really had a chance to kill that Stug. All he had to do was move his Calliopes closer. They, they're still out of damage range. All he had to do was keep them closer. I hear you. I'm not sure why he ran over that mine with both of his Calliopes. It yeah. was just a little necessary, but whatever. Maybe he wasn't paying attention. Did he kill? Did he finally kill that Pioneer Squad, though? No, is there running a while? No, no, I think he killed it. Oh, he, he did retreat it. He forced at least. Now where's he going? You got I have it. no idea. But I think he's just probably about... He'll probably call oh, it a Persian. Oh, my. That's not a good thing to do with the Calliopes. I think he's given up. <laughs> yeah. I think so too. Uh, well, you got Vet I mean, 3 Tiger stuck in yeah. your base with Stormtrooper squads right behind it, a level 2 veterancy, and this is all you have on the field. I expect a GG pretty soon. <laughs> Allied War Machine for the win. Yay! Give me another Calliope or give me death. I mean, well, both actually. Here comes the other Calliope barrage. Not quite a close that, range. That one was right on spot. Yeah. Or it should be. See? Look at that. If he had done a double Calliope barrage and pulled in a Pershing, he could have turned this around. But he did manage to rebuild his HQ. You gotta give him credit for that. Meanwhile, he's got flaming engineers inside of a flaming building. That's not bad. There you go. Oh, he's calliopeing his own his calliope. Own calliope barrage is killing his own calliope. And he's going to get a free one if it dies. No, it wore off early. <laughs> I can't believe it. Uh, this is definitely one of the craziest replays I've ever seen. <laughs> the calliope's going to try and shoot it with the little gun. <laughs> Fat chance. Run it over. Run him over, guy. He's not going to be able to run him over. He's got engine damage. Oh, main engine. Main gun thing. destroyed. Too little, too late. Yeah. Yeah, it needs good game. Okay. Well, I, I don't know. That was a weird ending, but what the hell is uh, happening to that guy? His 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 Panzer Shrek is on fire, or something. That's really weird. All right. Sorry, just looking at. I, yeah, it was GG anyways. I mean, his HQ was gonna go down no matter yeah. what he could do. So yeah. Well, that was um. God, someone's got to count. How many Calliope barrages that was? I'm counting at least probably 12 or And 13, probably two were effective. 15, 17. That's just a good showcase of what not to do with a Calliope. Well, I for the he most part. Had, he might have had a good chance. If he could have pushed on the right and just sat there and Calliope barraged the, the Axis base every time he used one of those. I mean, imagine. He probably could have taken that thing completely down. Almost all the buildings. A double Calliope barrage will take out an HQ if you do it. Close yeah. Enough. Well, maybe. I mean, double. It might be three of them. I forget, but it's, it's something. It doesn't take that many to to do right. it if you're close. Especially if you spread it over the base. I mean, he could have taken down a base building, you know, every every two every every time he barraged with two different things. Indeed. That Any would have been an interesting thoughts? thing to see. Ah, final thoughts. Uh, Calliope's. With great power comes great responsibility. Don't waste it on long-range shots. That's all I have to say. Cool. That's my closing thoughts. Is if you're interested, you can uh, visit my blog at uh, Vitten's blog, V-I-T-E-N-S, blog.wordpress.com. All right. We hope to have another one of these out for you next week, and we'll see what we can do about that. So thank you guys for tuning in. Send us your emails because we do need... Some more user submitted. It's about time for another user submitted. Give us some good team matches on Rails and Metal, would you? We haven't done a Rails and Metal match yet, and we're looking for another team match for our user submitted video replay review on something we've never done before. Rails and Metal seems as good as any other. So, send them to us. We're, we don't have many 1.7. We, we lost a lot of them when a 1.7 patch came out. So, 
Send them to us, talesof at gamefire.com. T-A-L-E-S-O-F at gamefire.com. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Bridger and Vinsby signing off.